You ready? <laughs> All right. So, um, episode, what episode are we on? Eight. Episode eight. Episode eight. Oh my gosh. I can't be- <laughs> believe we've lasted this long. And, and ep- people are listening. I'm getting a lot of good feedback. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it's meant for you, but they pass it on to Stop me every saying. once in a while. Well, I mean, you know, having the opportunity to sit down with somebody that you respect and enjoy talking to, it's been, it's been, these eight episodes have been fun. So uh, I, I hope people keep watching and we keep putting them out because yeah. I certainly enjoy doing this. I mean, the topics are endless. They are endless. I don't, I don't think we'll ever run out of content. Yeah. But after today, today's topic. Yeah. Um. We could get a. It's a little heated. Yeah, it's a little. <laughs> it, it's we got to be careful what we say. Right? Yeah. So today we're talking about the politics of the POA, the Property Owners Association. Yeah. If you're not on Hilton Head, um, this area, Hilton Head and Bluffton, pretty much everybody lives in what we've labeled here locally as a POA, a Property Owners Association, but is known across the country as an HOA as well, a Homeowners Association. Yes. Right. I can't. I mean, I literally. I told you before. I can't name ten neighborhoods off the top of my head that aren't under an HOA. Yeah, I can name true, like right? four, but yeah. that come to mind. So, do you live in an HOA? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's entertaining. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, one of the funnest things about an HOA is if they have like a private Facebook group. I mean, the the sh- the shit that you or hear. two. Oh my. Or four. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we have two. So we had one and then there was an election and there were some things on the ballot that were controversial and um, they kind of tamped down the um, the rhetoric that was happening and wouldn't allow it. So then this other guy made another Facebook page, a private group, yes. um, and he allowed it a little bit more, but he's he's booted a couple people off the page as well. Okay. Um, yeah. We we have a very similar. You have situation. you have more than one too. Oh yeah, you have one. It's like G rated, and then one that's like. I mean, pretty much, but but the one that's G rated sometimes does go rated R, but then within literally within a matter of hours, they'll get deleted. Why are people so naughty on these Facebook page, these Facebook groups? Right, they get yeah. ridiculous. Um. Well, and what makes it particularly awkward is, you know, you're a keyboard warrior behind the screen and you're putting every single thought out there and every single, you know, every, all your thoughts. And then you've got to see these people in real life. You know, you've got <laughs> to pass them driving down the street or walking your dog. Yeah. I mean, yikes. What do you yeah. do? Yeah. What, what, what is, what is the, the inherent problem? Why, why, like almost every single POA that I know of has some issues behind the scenes. Some do better than others of keeping it, you know, with the family, keeping it behind, yeah. you know, behind closed doors. But sometimes it bleeds out. It's ended up at times into the eye packet. I don't know if you remember, but years ago, uh, there was a lady that was at Wexford that was not happy. And she used to stand out on the road. Stop. With, she used to stand out on the road with a sign that said, sorry, Wexford, like, I know you don't have these problems anymore. But she had a sign and she'd stand out there and said, Wexford sucks. And she would just stand on 278 wow. with it all the time. And I don't remember she, that. She had it on a hat. She'd walk around to restaurants and stuff like oh, that. Man. Yeah, she was jilted. Yikes. That's, I mean, you got to have a lot of time on your hands to devote that kind of energy to trying to throw your HOA under the bus. I don't know. <laughs> so what kind of what kind of issues do y'all have that, um, I mean, you don't have to get into specifics, but you know, if somebody's thinking about moving here and they're wondering what it's like to live within an HOA, um, what are the issues that you see? Our issues, mostly, I would say probably 90% of our issues are people that think they're an exception to the rules or the covenants who go against whatever, you know, whichever covenant they don't think applies to them. And they go ahead and they do it anyway without any you know, without expecting consequences. So give an example, like painting their house or putting in a pool without approval. Or... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, things along those lines, um, livestock, you know, livestock, livestock, really like chickens. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, the, okay, I don't know. The, I don't know what to say. Chickens. Really? Yes. The, and the problem was is, it you, did you it, bring it chickens? It was not me. Well, listen, I'd love to have chickens, 
do you know how much I want to walk out to my backyard every morning and get me some fresh, like cage free eggs? Farm I mean, seriously. Egg. But, and that's the problem is when you think you're an exception, other people are like, well, they can do it. I can do it. Yeah. You know? And that's when it starts to snowball. So, but, you know, again, there, you know, the, the legality of it is you've got people that are following the rules. And then you've got the people that are going against the rules. And then the people that are following the rules are, you know, calling in reinforcements and saying, if you don't take legal action with this, you know, we're going to. And they can and they rightfully can. Sure. You know? Sure. So it's just. What about financial issues? Do you guys have any issues with. No. That from, from my experience in my neighborhood, and I've only been there for six years, um, I feel like the financial. I feel like the numbers are pretty transparent. Yeah. So 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 where we are, you know, we're in a, a, a private community and we have some golf courses and we have other amenities and we only have, you know, about 900 property owners. So, you know, you have two golf courses with private courses with 900 owners. Yeah. The expense to each individual owner can be can be quite a bit. And um, you start to get this feeling of the people that play golf versus the people that don't play golf. And I'm paying for this huge expense and I'm not really using it. And I'm subsidizing the person that is. That's your choice. That's right. You bought in there. You knew what it was yeah. when you bought in there, right? Exactly. And if you think of it on a much smaller scale, I mean, it is a little bit like a teeny tiny little country. You know what I mean? Like yeah. your, it, think of it kind of like neighborhood taxes. You know, sure, a little sure. bit, right? I mean, a lot of them even have their own law enforcement, right? Yes. Like, I mean, they, they are in a sense. Yeah. You know, they protect their citizens, providing security. Um, they do their own road maintenance. They do their own storm cleanup, something that we all learned a big lesson from, from Matthew, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, um, you know, would the county go in or the state go into the gated communities, the private communities uh, to clean up? Yeah. You know, was that something that they would or should do yeah or? it was a little bit of a debacle and i don't think we'd ever experienced anything of that magnitude no. on that level so mm. it, everyone was kind of like navigating through it trying yeah. to figure it out you yeah know? do i wait for them to come in and haul off all these trees or you know in our community we cut them up and we cleaned them up and we just kept piling them yeah um hoping that you know uh, the government would come in and, and haul it all away because it was a huge bill yeah and it wasn't a line item in anybody's budget yeah. You know, at the, at the time. Yeah. Um, you know, in our community, most of the issues that we see when there's headbutting, it is around financial things. So it's it's uh, increases in dues. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, I got myself in a little bit of hot water because um, there was talk about uh, a massive upgrade to our clubhouse to the tune of like a six million dollar renovation. Wow. And uh, my dad was living in the community at the time as well. And we took a little bit of a public position on it um, from the perspective of a real estate agent and um, and its potential effects on property values. Mm -hmm. We decided to mail a letter to the community. And that, uh, you know, there was many, many people that reached out to me and thanked me for it. But there was three or four people that... Um, Man, if they could have put my head on a stake and out in front of the house, like they would have, like somebody scrap scratched my name off my mailbox, and they were they were That's really petty. mad. Yeah, yeah, but people just get so emotional about it. They do, right? Like, yeah. And for me, I mean, I just had an opinion and I shared my opinion, but for a lot of these people, it's I don't know. They just take it further. And why do you think that they're you know why do you think that they get so dang emotional? I don't know. I. For someone like me, I mean, we work we we work outside of the neighborhood. So, I mean, we're all gone by eight in the morning, and sometimes we don't get back until six, seven, eight o'clock at night. So, what's taking place in my neighborhood is like literally the last thing on my mind. Yeah. But then you've got folks that they have the time to put the neighborhood and all its issues under a microscope. You know, like they're the ones walking by, you know, stopping and smelling the roses and seeing all the piles of crap along the side of the road, and and they get themselves very worked up. You know, so, I mean, you've just, you've got people from all walks of life with all different schedules and, and prioritizing their time in different ways. I think there's that in every community, right? Yeah. There's people that are more busy bodies and into other people's business. And I think, um, some, you know, all of HOAs are governed a little bit differently. Like, do you guys have paid 
people um, that operate your community or is it just all volunteers? No, it is strictly volunteer, <laughs> which, which is hard because, you know, you're basically, you know, you want an opinion and you want to throw your opinion out there. But at the same time, you want to tell other people what to do and how to do yeah. it. And it's kind of like, well, you do it. And yeah. We're like, no, I don't want to do that. So, yeah. So, so where I live, uh, there are volunteer committees and the board is made up of volunteer property owners, but we have an administration, uh, a general manager and all that that administers stuff. Like a management company? We well, have a management but they're company. they're full-time. Just for your neighborhood? Just for our, oh, wow. yeah, just okay. for our community. So we have a general manager who swears his allegiance to our community um, and, and all of the administrative people and financial people and just completely dedicated to our community, not providing management services for other communities. Yeah. The benefit of that is the execution of everything is not left up to the volunteers. Yeah. Right. So if somebody um, is, is breaking the rules, um, we have staff that's paid that deals with it to insulate kind of the member to member interaction. Gotcha. Um, there are some times where our community has made a mistake and, allowed that member to member interaction go a little bit too far mm -hmm. and it's caused, you know, it's caused some, caused some problems. Yeah. But in your yeah, community, exactly. it's just, it's member to member. Yes. Whew. Yeah. Like we have upcoming elections. Has there ever been a fight, like a fist fight? Like yes. Have you, ever, have you ever punched somebody? I haven't. I've come wanted, close. Yeah. I've wanted to, okay. if I'm being honest. See, I, I found something. Okay. But, tell us about that. For, just say it's somebody else. Okay, well, hypothetically, there, what, what might have happened? So there was a situation where my, I'm going to go ahead and just say it was me. Um, my, I was out of town and my daughter was driving home. She had taken a friend of hers home and it was in the wee hours of the morning. And she had had a buddy of hers who she's been friends with since kindergarten. And he was hanging out the side of the window and he threw a can or something oh. out the window. Now, I, of course, was furious with Sure. Our daughter, because she knows better um, than to allow people to hang out of the car and throw things. But, sure. you know, these kids are like 17 years old. Like, they're going to be stupid and make dumb mistakes. Well, the president at the time of our HOA had video footage and screenshot the picture of my car coming through the gate and the kid throwing the... Oh, no. Yeah. And, and he, he just... He feels it's always necessary to make examples of people. And I'm not the only person that he did this to. Wow. He's done it to others. Should have been a little more discreet about that, right? I mean, you can't call someone and be like, hey. I mean, it's it was just, it was taken to a whole nother level. Yeah. Unnecessary. It, and, it, and, and when you do stuff like that, it causes tension among neighbors. I had half the neighbors that felt sorry for me being like, I'm so sorry he did this to you. That was so out of line. And then the other ones... Talk, like want to crucify me and be like get a hold of your kids like yeah. what's wrong with you and it's like listen yeah. i'm doing the best i can here yeah yeah sometimes so. despite our best efforts kids do stupid stuff right yeah i mean yeah. yeah yeah i mean that seems like one of those examples where if you had some insulation with with people that were employees and management the emotion of one member or two yes. or, or one property owner to another property owner wouldn't feel so um and, and that's the problem is there's too many emotions. There's too many personalities. Yep. You know, you can't, you, the whole point of an HOA is to make educated decisions about what's in the best interest of the neighborhood, not run on emotions and get everyone's panties in a wad because this happened or that happened. And you suddenly have an entire neighborhood at each other's throats, yep. you know? Yep. So, so we have, you know, in our area, we have different types of uh, POAs, right? So yeah. we have some that um, the services that they provide are very minimal. Um, yeah. They might not even have a security force. Yeah. And then we have others, you know, we could think about the private club communities where when you join that community, you pay a membership fee upon entry and like golf is free and tennis is free and I mean, it's not free because you're paying a pretty sizable, could be, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars a month uh, in membership dues. Yeah. Um, going towards all that, and and so, and then you have everything in between, right? Yeah. 
Do you think they all have those kind of issues or is it, it does one more than the other? Oh gosh, I honestly don't know. What do you think? You know, I, I think a lot has to do with how the community is managed. Mm -hmm. So in my time uh, where I live, we've had two general managers. Okay. Um, and it's been quite a different experience between the two. How long um, have they, how long have, were each of them in that position? Well, the first guy was in there for like, you know, I don't know, I, I want to say 30 years. Wow. Like, like a long time. Before, I've lived where I've lived since 2005. Okay. Um, and so he was there well before I was. Okay. And then he retired. Um, and then the new general manager isn't new anymore. Probably, uh, it's going to be at least five years, six mm -hmm. years. Um, and it's just, they're, they're, you know, it's just a totally different approach. One guy um, seemed to be much more in command of the community. Yeah. You know, we have elections every year. So, um, you know, a new president and direction of the community could change very much from one year to the next. So to have, you know, somebody that could kind of smooth those, those bumps out, in terms of the general manager remaining constant and mm -hmm. keeping continuity, I think can be very beneficial. If you have a general manager that, you know, is more reactive, yeah. um, then it allows that kind of yeah. bipolar, <laughs> you know, um, you know, based on who is in charge of the board at the time and all that kind of stuff. So I, I, think, a, I think a lot of it depends on just how the governance is set up either the, you know, how the general manager, what their personality type is, how they manage the community. But, you know, considering, you know, if you make an assumption that all that is the same, um, I've been around here for a while and I've seen, you know, I've seen shit shows in the communities that are the higher end, yeah. uh, more expensive, higher dues. And I've seen the same thing on the ones that uh, don't really provide anything besides uh, general maintenance in the common areas. Yes. Uh, I think it I, I think it can happen to, to kind of all of them. When was your neighborhood established? I don't know, 70s, I would think, 70s or 80s. Okay. Time. Do you think that covenants do eventually become outdated and should be, do you think people should go back to them and think about maybe like reversing something or, or do you think it's like kind of changing the American constitution? Oh, no, no, no. So, I, you know, th there's been several things uh, where I live that needed to change. They took longer to change than they should, in my opinion. Because, well, it's a process, right? I mean, if you're mm -hmm. if you're adding and taking away covenants, you can't just like delete it. I mean, it has to go through a legal process, right? Yeah, I think, you know, and I, I think a lot of it has to do with with us as a society adapting, yeah. adapting to things and coming to terms with things. But, you know, there's a couple of things going on right now that a lot of communities are struggling with, like um, electric vehicles. Yes. Uh, not necessarily, I don't mean Teslas. Right. I mean, you know, like uh, the, the smaller electric vehicles like bicycles and yes. and, and uh, what's the boards, the electric boards called? Like a boosted board kind of thing. Okay. Like, one, like those I know what you're things. talking about, yeah. There's communities are having a lot of problem understanding like, what do we allow? And I, you know, I th think the town, I should know more about this, but the town has allowed the, you know, electric bikes on bike paths. Yeah. But, you know, at some point, something bad's going to happen and there's going to be lawsuits. And I think they're going to second guess some of that. In the community that I live in, they've approved them now, but then they've restricted um, the size motor that you can have, which okay. sounds like a really difficult thing <laughs> yeah. to enforce. But going back, here's, a, here's an example. The community that I live in... Um, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, they had a vote because you're not allowed to park a pickup truck or you were not allowed to park a pickup truck outside your house where I live. Meanwhile, there are pickup trucks that are like $95,000. <laughs> that, that was the argument that finally changed it. But, yeah. So I remember probably 15 years ago, they put it out to a vote that we need to change the covenant. Yes. And they were like, here's what the rule says. And then they showed like, it was like a, a video, uh, like an internet where you ballot, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so they had a picture. And like they showed this POS pickup truck, mm -hmm. right? That looked like it had just come off the farm, right? 
And like that's their example of what a pickup truck is, yeah. right? Yeah. And so of course it didn't pass. They needed to get two thirds for it to pass. Yes. Well, ten years later, when more and more people were buying pickup trucks, I guess good people yeah. were buying pickup trucks, right? Yeah. They had the same boat, and then they had you know one of the ninety thousand dollar pickup yeah. trucks in that picture. And now you're allowed to allowed to park pickup trucks outside your house at night as long as there's not ladders on them or or business signs on them those yeah. kind of things yeah so the intention was right yeah but you know the world changed and regular people were buying pickup trucks yes right right that's kind of what you're talking about right like exactly the, the, that's exactly what i'm talking about do you guys yeah. have something going on now that's uh that's antiquated that you you guys are battling over um to... i mean nothing in particular just you know, we've got we've got board members that resigned last year that are now running again. And, it was, you know, it's basically like they are not happy with the way the neighborhood has been run under the current board. So they're like, oh, let us get back in there and yeah. we'll show you guys how it's done. And it's- are there term limits in your community? Uh, yes. But you can get off and then and then get back yes. on and it resets. Yes. Well, that doesn't sound like it makes sense. I know, I know. And so, is there talking about? Is there talk of changing that? I feel like I saw it out there at some point, but I mean, who knows? Who knows? Does your community have enough people willing to be on the board? I mean, I know that's a problem for some places. For a while there, we didn't, and and then there was this huge uproar, and people really stepped up, and and you know. Now, yeah, there there's actually more people running than we have to vote for, which is unusual. Nice. You know, usually that's good, right? Yeah, yeah. Whereas years ago, you had to beg people, please, somebody, somebody's got to do this. Yeah. We have to have a board in place. How many people are on your board? Five. That's good. Yeah. Sometimes the board is too big; it can just yeah. it's just n- nothing gets done, right? Yeah. Nope. Yeah. So, what's on their radar? Like, what is all these people are wanting to uh, you know to get on the board? What is what? What are the things that are you know that are that are hot button items right now? Um, hot, well, definitely the social media situation, where you know, like calling neighbors out, yeah, things like that, um, heated topics. Um, but then you know, there's for example, um, we have a lot of vegetation on our trees, and some of the trees are being strangled, and you've got half the neighborhood saying, "Leave it alone, let nature take its course." But, you know, it's technically it's not really nature because it's a neighborhood and it needs yeah. maintenance. Yeah. So, I mean, just things like that. And then speed, like speeding, you know, like we, you know, and I think what was another one? Oh, they wanted to have one person designated on each street to be like the street captain. So it's a lot of like sort of policing one another, yeah. you know, and I personally, I just I think it causes a lot of tension. You yeah. Know? So I, that's something that you need to be careful with, right? So in, in our community a few years back, they created a community pride committee okay. and they nominated just property owners to yeah. go throughout the entire community. And they basically had a clipboard and yes. they went to every house yeah. and they like raided the house. In my opinion, they raided the house. Picked it apart. Yeah. And yeah. on my house, you know, they... They wrote me up for having a cracked driveway, and it was, it was pretty good, pretty good cracks, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but then they gave me a deadline to fix it, yeah. and so I looked at the covenants, and they didn't have the right to do it, and so, so I pushed back. And you know, it, I think it's a big problem when you have one neighbor, you know, pretending like they know more than another neighbor and going through and and basically passing judgment on other people's property. Exactly. Like, I know my driveway is cracked. Yeah, I see it every day. I drive over it every day. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And I also, you know, I am not the federal government and I am not my community. I live on a budget. Yeah. And what we do is we prioritize the maintenance uh, on our house. Yes. And there's certain things sometimes that are more important. Like at that given time, we were facing having to put a new or needing or wanting to put a new roof on the house. Mm-hmm. It was like 40 grand, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so we, you know, it, it was on the list, but it wasn't the priority. And having, you know, community kind of overstep their bounds. And, uh, and you know, and the last thing that someone's going to do is drive by my house 
and go, wow, that's really nice, but that driveway, what a mess, right? Yeah. Like, like you're not even going to notice it. Like we do all kinds of plantings and all kinds of stuff. I mean, we have a lot of pride in our house and it really, that's kind of a gut punch when they do those kind of things. So you have to, you have to be really, really careful when you authorize um, people to, to kind of pass judgment on other people in a community. Big time. But you guys don't have an administrative staff that can do it, right? Like you don't have paid full-time people that could that could do those. No, we in have our management company. A management company. Yes. Yeah. So the board reports to the management company, and the management company is the one who issues the emails and the fines and all that stuff. What do you think the solution is with social media and these things? I mean... It's really made it worse, hasn't it, in terms of these communities? Yeah. You guys know yeah. about Nextdoor? Oh, yeah. I had to take myself off Nextdoor. It's the same. The Delete. Groups, isn't it? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I used to be on it, too. I mean, it's just miserable. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's literally just a bunch of people constantly bitching. It's a bitch fest. Yeah. So, yeah, I took myself off of that. But are you on the, your community Facebook group? I am, but I really try to ignore them unless my name is thrown out there and I'll read and see if it's worth my energy. Yeah. You know, like I just, to, to devote that level of energy to the arguments and the, and the probing is just, I mean, it'll suck the life out of you. I mean, I just can't allow myself. I, my anxiety gets to that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, same way as, you know, I participated a little bit, not in attacking people, but I participated in my opinion Yeah. Uh, on matters when people were asking for opinions. And then it was just like, you know, I had people correcting misspelling of mine yes. and stuff like that. I'm like, I'm kidding me, but yep. Seriously. And so, you know, now I'm just uh, at best, I'm an observer and, uh, yeah. and it's more for comedic value, I think. Same. Uh, at this point. Yep. Same. You know, there's a lot of people that volunteer on these boards mm -hmm. that are good people. Yeah. And they're trying to make a difference and they're trying to be helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and they might just have one person on the board that is the vocal one that just brings everybody down, right? Yeah. Like, it's not everybody. No. And, you know, overall, my experience living in a community that has an HOA, it's positive. Mm-hmm. Right? Is, is yours? It should be. It should be because it really should just be about, it really should just be about smart spending and less about governing people. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, well, but if, if you have covenants, right? And mm -hmm. you knew what the covenants were when you went in. Yeah. Right? You're not saying that, you know, you should throw all that out. No. Um, I'm saying pick your battles a little bit, you know? Well, yeah yeah as as a as a homeowner as a homeowner yeah or, or are you saying that to the board both kind of both i mean there are things that i think you can make a federal case out of or you can just kind of like let it slide a little bit like your the crack driveway situation or um you know like right now my house needs painting my my the color on my house is badly faded uh -huh. and we're in the we're in the process of you know, trying to figure out if we want to go with the same color or completely change the color altogether. Yeah. But I don't need my are, board. Are you crack? Um, I, not yet, but I, I feel like it's coming. You know, I, I, I heard snippets. Okay. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's like give people a chance. You know, yeah. like we, we know that it needs to be done, and like you said, one project at a time. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, uh, I lived in, when I first moved here, I lived in Palmetto Dunes. And in Palmetto Dunes, they did a thing where they had a neighborhood, or not a neighborhood, a property of the month or something like yeah. that. Like they recognized one property as being beautifully maintained and you got a sign in your yard. And um, my parents had won that one time. And I just, why can't we do more of that? Why can't we recognize the people that like, are contributing why are we always calling out the ones that we feel like are falling short like it's i think i think it, it you know I, th I think there should at least be a balance like you like if you're going to tell somebody they need to paint their house 
tell somebody else that their house looks great. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. recognize, recognize, um, you know, recognize everybody. You know, it doesn't yeah. just have to be always focused on the negative. What, you know. Anyways, get off my soapbox. No, but I mean, you're right. But I think a little bit of that is human nature too. Yeah. You know, it's. So I really think that some people thrive off of causing controversy for others. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. That's yeah, it's like they like. they open the door and they throw the smoke bomb in yes. and they run away. Yeah. yeah. They're just antagonistic. People. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And those are the ones that are dangerous to have like in power, quote unquote. Yeah, they can change the temperature of the entire community for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel that we could talk about POAs forever. Is totally. there something else that you experience that you have that I you want to talk mean, about or let me refer to my notes. Okay. No, no, no. I think we just about covered it all. I think, you know, you as for the buyers out there, you need to really take into consideration, you know, how your neighborhood operates. And you need to take into consideration if you are a nonconformist yep. or if you're going to be someone who says, okay, this is the way it has to be because this is what I agreed to when I purchased this property. Sure. You know? Sure. Know so, what you're getting into. Yeah. Most people ask about, the, you know, you know, it used to be 15 years ago, nobody asked anything. Then yeah. people were asking about, you know, hey, I want to know what the finances are and all that kind of stuff. But very rarely did anybody dig in and ask about like what's the governance how does this place run yeah you know can i get a copy of your covenant yeah you know before they purchase in a community and understand what they're really buying into and um well it, it changes so often anyway that just because you have the minutes from last month's meeting yeah. doesn't mean that two months from now it's going to be even remotely on the same level yeah you know yeah so but having said all of that Mm-hmm. Um, I do appreciate in my community that we have covenants so that, you know, my neighbor can't do something stupid yeah. that affects the value of my property. True. Um, I appreciate um, that we have uh, security on site mm-hmm. uh, that's there if, uh, if there's an emergency or that protects the community when there's an evacuation all of those things. You know, there's so many, where I live, there's so many good people that work there yeah. that do the good work of the community that um, I'm willing to put up with a few of the aggravations and frustrations. Yeah. I mean, um, no matter where you go, you're going to have it. Yeah. So yeah. you might as well just deal with it. <laughs> sure. There's no doubt about it. You don't have it. a choice. Yeah. And, and I've also learned that most of the issues don't necessarily stem from the staff. Right. It's really from other property owners that want to force their will on their neighbors. Yes. That's true. We should take those people out back and whip them. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you totally agree. No? There's people okay. in the community you like to kick their ass, right? Big time. Yeah. yeah. Big on time. that I'm just note. being honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and on that note, Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> See you again soon on the next episode, which will be number 10. Number, yeah. The big number 10. Wait, nine. Number, eight, number nine. Nine. Can't count. <laughs> uh, come back for number nine. Thanks, y'all. <laughs>